Exclusive. Lawyer confirms Parliament is wrong on the $10,000 cash ban. Martin North, John Adams. In the interest of the people. Hello, John. Hello, sir. It's the bill that keeps giving. Today we're going to uh, we're going to reveal to the audience some exclusive information about this cash transaction ban bill. Um, so we covered the inquiry report in quite detail in terms of our last show, and there has been some media reporting with Alan Jones picking up the story on 2GB and Sky as of yesterday, and today is Wednesday. Um, now, uh, one of the key issues that we raised in last episode was this issue of can this bill trap people in banks? Uh, so uh, I testified uh, on the 30th of January and I gave a scenario of how this bill could be actually um, used to trap people in banks. Now, uh, the committee um, um, in their report, in their inquiry report, said that this evidence was wrong. Now, in our last show, I said that the committee was wrong. Uh, now, um, in that time, since our last show, uh, I, I went to a lawyer and had independent legal opinion drawn up on this particular point. And so today's show is to reveal this legal opinion. And the legal opinion basically say, says that I was right in what I testified to, uh, to, to the committee on the 30th of January. We were right in terms of what we said in our last show. Parliament is wrong. The committee is wrong. Um, and, and, and so, again, this is another example of politicians who are not up to the job, being overpaid, who are making blanket statements about proposed laws, um, and yet they don't actually understand what they're, uh, what they're examining. And so, so this is quite extraordinary that, you know, we're a couple of experts, we give evidence, they say we're full of BS, and, and now we've gone to the step of actually getting legal opinion that we're going to talk about in this show, and, and there will be a few steps that follow on from today's conversation. And this is very significant, right? Because essentially any bill has to be based on good law, yes. right? And what this is saying is that the law is actually being misinterpreted by the writers of the bill. Exactly, exactly. So, so, so yeah, so now, um, what, what did I say on the 30th of January? Um, so I said something very, very specific. Um, it, so Senator McAllister from Labor asked me, how does this specific law trap people in banks? So John, let's just play your original clip, which was the one where you actually gave that evidence. So uh, under the rules, there is an exemption. So, and this is the, um, so, so the section eight of the rules basically makes it exempt that if you are um, reporting under the anti-money laundering law, um, you're exempt from this law. Now, who, who, who does that cover? That covers the banks. So uh, as the rules are stated now, if you have money in the bank, you can still deposit, you can still withdraw, and that's legal, but it's an exemption. And, and if that exemption is removed by the assistant treasurer, then, it, it actually becomes illegal to actually withdraw or deposit money in the bank. Um, so, 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 so if I may stop you sure. there for clarity, Mr. Adams, your objection um, that you're stating here in this third point is not the exemption, but the fact that it is contained in subordinate legislation, not in the primary legislation. Well, yeah, so, so and I'll, I'll provide I'll, significant discretion to the government of the day. Yeah, yes. So, 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 the, so obviously you'd be aware that the, the, the scrutiny of bills committee basically said that these exemptions should be in the primary legislation, not in not in the rules. But, but technically speaking, the bill itself says that all transactions in Australia above ten thousand can't be done in cash, and then there are certain exemptions. So, if you pass the legislation in, in um, um, and exclude the rules, taking money in the bank is illegal basically in cash but but then and, and then obviously and so obviously one of the big concerns is if we did have some sort of financial crisis if we did have some sort of run on the banks um, and if you look at for example um, you know you've got massive capital controls in Lebanon now you've had cap massive capital controls in Greece in 2012 uh, and in terms of Cyprus as well if we did have a severe financial crisis uh, th th one of the big concerns is is that this law if the exemption is removed section 8 of the rules uh, basically you can't take money in the bank so so that's a direct consequence of, of this legislation but on, on, on so, the just to stop you there, I mean, we might as well just, you've got a lot of ideas, so we might as well explore them in an orderly way. But your proposition is a fear that in the event of a financial crisis, 
a government might use the latitude inherent in the legislation before us to intervene in ways that you don't agree with in the economy. Is that, I'm not... What, what, what I'm saying is that that legal avenue is possible. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, now, what I said was that, so we have the bill, as in what's before Parliament, and we have the rules, which is the regulations. The bill itself makes all transactions at $10,000 or above illegal right across Australia. There's the rules, which is the regulations, which says there's a set of, that, that there's a set of exemptions um, that, that under these conditions you're allowed to um, conduct transactions. Now, uh, one of the exemptions is in relation to banks um, in terms of, and, and this is this section eight of the rules. Now, what I testified on the 30th of January and said was that if you bring in the, um, the, the, the bill, if Parliament passes the bill and you make these regulations uh, law, and then at some future point the Assistant Treasurer was to remove this exemption on the banks, at that point it is illegal to deposit or withdraw $10,000 um, uh, from, from any financial institution. I was quite specific about how this law could actually trap people in banks. Um, now, uh, the committee in its inquiry report um, had this specific paragraph 2.7 uh, that we said in the last show uh, but that said I was wrong. Now, they didn't name me, but they said contrary to evidence. So, so this is paragraph 2.7, quote, the committee also notes that contrary to evidence provided to it, the cash payment limit does not in any way reduce the capacity of individuals and businesses to withdraw money in any denomination from their bank accounts and hold it outside of the financial system. Likewise, the bill does not affect the ability to deposit cash with a financial institution. Now, uh, that is, that, so that claim is wrong. So the bill itself makes it everything illegal and it's this exemption in the rules. So, um, so, so yeah, so uh, now they have said that we are wrong in terms of this technical point. And one of the important things to note, Martin, is, is that some months ago, the Treasury itself, um, uh, that they put out a fact sheet, and we'll put the fact sheet on the screen, um, and they had a series of myths, and they had a series of facts. And, 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 and in terms of the facts, so, so, so there was this myth about your ability to uh, interact with banks. And so this so-called fact that Treasury presented was that, quote, you will still be able to deposit and withdraw 10,000 or more cash into or from your accounts. Now, um, so again, um, what we're saying, let's, let's be very specific here. We're saying that um, if, if everything passes as proposed by government, that is correct. You can still do that. But what we're saying is, is that the assistant treasurer at the stroke of a pen can remove this exemption um, uh, in a financial crisis. Um, and, and were that to happen, at that point, it is illegal to deposit or in terms of withdrawal. Now, um, uh, obviously, one of the criticisms that we received from the committee was about these so-called hypothetical scenarios. Now, now wh wh why is this important is that, you know, a lot of what we are assuming and, and commenta commentating on is not to consider this law in the current environment, what happens when we, uh, when we have a financial crisis and what tools does the government have to actually um, um, protect the banking system and what does that mean for our rights and our ability to escape the, the, the banking system and protect our wealth. Now, it's interesting that we, in the last 24 hours, we heard a bit of a chuckle off camera about, about this run on toilet paper. Um, and, and so, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, right across the, the country, people have been rushing to buy toilet paper because of, of fears of the coronavirus. Now, this morning, Woolworths, and let's actually put this article up uh, from the government, Guardian on the screen, Woolworths this morning made the decision that they will limit the amount of toilet paper every customer can buy because there's effectively a run on toilet paper. So um, now, yeah, yes, yes, that's not the banks, but 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 we have seen um, Northern Rock. We've seen other examples where when people get nervous about banks, they have a run, um, and there's an incentive for governments and the banks to limit the amount of money leaving the system. That's what we call capital controls. Woolworths, in effect, have, have you know, um, I think the Guardian called it rationing. You could call it rationing, you can call it a, a capital control on toilet paper. But, 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 but what we're talking about in, in essence is, um, this, is a, this law, if passed, gives government a new tool to trap us in the banking system in a financial crisis 
by removing this section eight of the rules whenever they so desire. Right, just to be clear, the regulation is held outside the bill, the bill refers to it. The regulation doesn't require parliamentary approval to change. So basically the Treasury can just in an instant change that particular regulation and suddenly we are not allowed to take more than $10,000 out of the bank. If, if that regulation is changed and the exemption is removed, the Senate technically has 15 sitting days in which to overturn that, that change, but the Senate has to sit. Yep. Uh, and then they have to pass it, assuming you, as, assuming that the Senate has the numbers. So if Senate, if the Senate's not in recess, and the and you remove, and you remove the exemption, well then it is it will be illegal hmm. to deposit or withdraw more than ten thousand um, dollars at that point when that change is made. Right. So let's just talk hypothetically. So if we suddenly found that the um, current crisis is getting worse and there is a, a run on the banks. Somebody in Treasury can say, right, we need to activate that if this bill had been passed, right? Yes. And at that point, you could not take more than $10,000 out. Now there's some you know, funnies around there and Senate might, might not do this, that, yeah. But effectively, they can turn it off. Correct. Yeah. I made a claim. Uh, Parliament says I'm wrong. Treasury says I'm wrong. So, so, so let's actually now get into the legal advice. So, so, uh, so there is um, a lawyer, uh, a Robert Butler. Now, uh, we should say for transparency's sake that Robert uh, was, uh, we went to him last year to get advice about uh, in terms of bail-in. So when we talked about a loophole on bail-in, Robert pro uh, provided us with some advice that we presented on, on the show last year. So, so again, uh, he was actually at the 30 January hearing. So he actually sat in the audience and he's been, he's been tracking this uh, bill very closely. So I emailed him, uh, I think on Sunday or Monday and, and, and basically said, here's my argument. Uh, here's the counterclaim from the committee. Uh, you're a lawyer, what's your read? So he's provided me a three page independent legal opinion. There's a couple of key uh, uh, quotes from this three page advice that I'll go through. So, so here's, here's the first one, quote, you gave evidence at the hearing on 30 January 2020, and in the course of that evidence, you expressed the opinion that if Parliament and the Minister enacted the currency restrictions on the use of cash bill and the draft of the associated legislative instrument, the currency restrictions on the use of cash rules 2019, as referred to the Committee for Inquiry and Report, um, and the relevant Minister subsequently repealed Section of the rules, then this would mean uh, that it would be an offence to withdraw more than 10000 out of a bank account at any one time. I agree with the conclusion you draw in the evidence you gave. So, so this is uh, Robert Butler's view that he agrees that what I said to the committee is actually correct. Now, he, he, he also had um, something else to say in the conclusion of his legal opinion. Quote, similarly, in the absence of the rules, and uh, particularly Rule 8, the bill does affect the ability to deposit cash uh, with a financial institution um, as, as it makes such a transaction in excess of the cash payment limit an offence with draconian penalties. So again, the Treasury in their fact sheet says that the, the bill, this cash payment limit, does not affect your ability to deposit or withdraw an independent lawyer who have, we have no commercial relationship with this lawyer. He has looked at... Um, the, the law and the, and the regulation as is, and he says, no, um, Treasury is wrong. It does actually have the, it does actually impact the ability um, to, to deposit and withdraw under the scenario that, that we have just proposed, which is that um, the assistant treasurer, uh, the current one or a future one at some point can just sign a new piece of paper and, and, and remove this particular exemption. Right, and the point of course is that there is a reason why it's in the regulation, not in the bill. Because if it had been in the bill, it would have to have gone out to Parliament to be changed. Because it's as a regulation, it can be changed without all of that oversight. Exactly. And, and, and the important thing to note on that one, Martin, is, is that so there's a number of exemptions. Um, uh, the, the committee has only asked for one exemption to be removed, to, to move, be moved from the regulation to the bill, which is the exemption on private transactions, which is, uh, you know, if you and I were doing, a, if, if you were selling me a secondhand car uh, on a, on a, and we were not businesses. Um, now, they, they're saying on that point is, is that um, because a lot, there's a lot of concern about, you know, the ability to, to do private transactions, gifts, etc. So they're saying, put that particular exemption 
in the bill, which 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 would mean that if government ever wanted to change the exemption, they would have to go through parliament again, the House of Reps, the Senate, etc. But on this particular exemption about the banks, section eight of the rules, um, the committee didn't say anything about that particular exemption. And this is the exemption where, again, if the assistant treasurer signed a piece of paper, it would be illegal to withdraw or deposit more than ten thousand in terms of the bank kicking hand and in terms of any like in terms of any one time. Now, uh, what what why why is this important? Is obviously you know uh, when you when you are in a crisis, in a financial crisis, if you have a lot of money in the banking system and you want the access to uh, take that money out. So we have talked about um, you know the banks have a number of tools at their disposal to 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 limit deposits capital controls. Uh, I mean, we, we do have the issue of, uh, in terms of bail-in around confiscation um, and, and how that potentially may work. Um, so, so again, uh, you know, the, the banks have certain legal abilities under the terms and conditions, which is your commercial contract, but, but this gives the uh, government a, because, because, you know, capital controls is more effective if it comes from government as opposed to the banks imposing capital controls on their customers. So, so this gives the, um, the, government a new legal tool now uh, you know and we should be clear we're not saying that the government will definitely use this tool we are just saying that it is an option that the government may may wish to use uh, and and you know uh like i said in my testimony this is a legal possibility which actually increases the risk of having your money in the bank uh and this is a so-called myth but we have a lawyer that says no it's actually a fact right and it's worth again understanding that you know what people might say on a normal day and what people will do in a crisis could well be different right because effectively the regulators and government will be grasping at any straw they can in a crisis and this basically gives them a lever precisely and if we saw the behavior of woolies this morning i mean they are just grabbing um so i actually have um, a contact who actually works for one of the major uh, chains um uh, who's who's actually in wa and they said that even though that they have supplies in their distribution network, uh, in their supply chain, the amount of people buying toilet paper at the rate they're buying it, they just can't keep up. Mm. Um, and so this is why, because they can't keep up with demand, this is why they have had to bring in rationing. And, and obviously, you know, whether it was Northern Rock, where people lost confidence in, in that bank, or Greece in 2012, when people lose confidence that the banks are going to maintain solvency, they will rush and try to get their money at the bank. And there's obviously an incentive to stop that because if you allow the run to happen, these banks will go bankrupt very, very quickly. Right. One point I'll just make before we move on, Martin, is so, uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're talking about this. Uh, um, th this particular issue today in terms of a 10,000 threshold. Now, obviously, there is some concern that um, a future parliament, if, there was, if this does become law, a future parliament may lower the threshold. Now, just say that, for example, and, and at some point down the track, the, the parliament was to lower the threshold from, say, 10,000 to 2,000. Well, that would mean that this, with this particular issue of this Section 8 of the rules, um, you know, the, the government would have the ability at a lower threshold to be even, um, you know, to, to limit your ability to take, uh, you know, even smaller amounts out of the bank. So, 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 that, so that that's another important point to to say that in terms of your um, your your the safety of your money in the bank. Um, yes, there is a we're talking about a ten thousand dollar sort of issue at the moment. But if the threshold was to ever be lowered, um, you know, that that would actually mean. Uh, you know, uh, that, would, that would have sig more significant financial consequences in your relationship with the banking system. Right, and we know internationally that so around the world some of those limits are a lot lower than here, as yeah. proposed by the bill. So yeah. it's important to bear that in mind. Yeah. Okay. Now, in terms of the political implications, so, 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 yeah, so, so I think it's, it's, it's quite staggering that, again, we have politicians who are investigating laws because that's what inquiry is all about mm. um that that they don't examine these laws properly they you know that, that, that they basically come out with conclusions that are factually wrong um and and i think from a political political standpoint it actually brings into question the integrity of the report because so, so in our last show we we stated there was a whole series of facts and a whole series of policy issues that were not properly addressed by the committee, and it was a pretty much of a con job, um, a whitewashed report. So I think the fact that we now have a legal opinion 
um, that, that basically backs us up. Um, you know, it, it, it calls to attention as to, um, you know, if if, part, if the Senate does vote on this, they effectively are voting on false pretenses, uh, and, and that's not how Parliament should be working. Right, and we don't know, of course, whether it's um, a deliberate obfuscation or whether it's a mistake, but either way, it's a bad show. Yes, yes. Now, I'm not sure if there's, of the committee members, uh, in terms of the senators on the committee, I'm not sure if, if, if any of them are lawyers, uh, but, and, and look, so having, so I think I said in my testimony, so the chair of the committee I used to work with, uh, Slade Brockman, when we were both coalition advisors, so he is, is he's, not, he's never been a practicing lawyer, but um, one of the things that, that um, I've always done as a matter of practice is if, and I'm an economist, not a lawyer, but, but if there are points of law where I'm not sure about, I will go get legal counsel to actually get, um, to make sure that I'm not going to make something that's wrong or, look, or say something that's wrong. And, and yet, you know, the, the chairman in particular has been quite careless on, on you know, in, in injecting this paragraph 2.7. What I'm intending to do with this is actually to submit it to the Senate Economics Committee and basically ask them to either uh, change or amend this paragraph 2.7 because it is factually wrong. Um, and, and so there is uh, some media outlets who I'm potentially you know, going to share this legal advice with. But for the ordinary Aussie who's thinking about, well, what does this law mean for me? It, it means that the government has the ability to trap you in the banks. Um, and, and we have uh, you know, an, an independent lawyer who basically confirms that point. Right. And John, can anybody get hold of that advice? Uh -huh. Yes. Now, uh, so, so yeah, so, so if anyone wants this advice, um, they can email me directly. Uh, I have uh, the approval of Robert Butler to distribute his opinion. So I'm happy to share this opinion if people want to call up their member of parliament or call up in terms of their senators and say, um, hey, uh, you know, Adam says X, committee says Y, uh, and a lawyer has now injected himself into the process and said, no, Adams is correct. Um, do not pass this bill uh, because whatever you've been told by the committee, the committee got it wrong. So, so, so if people want to do that, that, that's fair enough. I'll be writing to the committee directly. I'll be on the phone with certain members of parliament myself. Uh, I'll be distributing the opinion uh, to various media outlets. Um, whether anyone picks it up or not, who knows? Um, uh, one of the points I, I think I will make is, is that so, uh, like I said before, Alan Jones uh, made a big, big song and dance about this issue yesterday on Sky News and in 2GB. I mean, I mean, we've been talking about this for eight months, and 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 he he has come later on the party. So, so you know, where where is? I mean, we are the tip of the spear. I mean, we are leading the coverage on this issue. We're doing all the original research, um, and, and the people watching this show, you are effectively the the army fighting for rights in this country because you're the ones that have put enormous pressure on parliament to get to to be able to get us to having an inquiry and, and, and be able to go through this process yeah and it's in the interest of the people which is precisely what this channel is about absolutely john i appreciate your time today thank you martin north john adams in the interest of people we'll see you next time